BioBalance HealthCast episode 211, Stroke, Heart Attack, and Testosterone. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and I have been doing these for a little over two years now on a weekly basis, and we started doing them because we were writing a book together, The Secret Female Hormone, which has now been published by Hay House, and hopefully you have your copy already. Uh, But in the process of doing them with that sort of tightly scripted focus, we discovered that too many ongoing things were interrupting our focus. There were there were events in the news, there were articles that came out that, that took medicine in a different direction and, and Kathy's sort of like a, a flea on a griddle. Her mind just jumps from topic That's to topic. That's not very to topic. attractive. Well, but you have... <laughs> That's you, how I, my mind works. Your mind works that way and, and I think it's attractive <laughs> because I think it's, it's fun to try to follow the flea. <laughs> but she's always sending me these articles to read to prepare for our discussions on camera and she sent me one this week. Uh, I don't know if you have been following the news out, out in the world the way we follow for, for this narrow topic, but there have been articles claiming that testosterone replacement leads to or contributes to cardiovascular problems, heart attacks, and death. And that Stress. if you've been given testosterone as a replacement uh, hormone, that you might be at risk for that. And get in touch with your local attorney because they're building these <laughs> databases for lawsuits. Uh, and, and we've done a couple podcasts about those. We've talked about some research by Abraham Morgan Thaler at Harvard mm-hmm. and what those conclusions are. But Kathy found a, an article in the Journal of Endocrinology assessing all of the various research data that they've been able to find tying testosterone uh, to cardiovascular events and issues. And she sent it to me. And I read it. And I'm somewhat knowledgeable (laughs) about these things because we've been working for a couple years on this. But there was a lot in this article that, as I read, I just went glazed over and said, huh? So I thought I would ask her on camera, talk to me like a third grader and explain this stuff to me. And maybe it would be of interest to those of you who follow Hopefully we won't lose you in the reading of the medical terms, it, but I'll translate it. <laughs> okay, so so this week she's going to translate for me. These are uh, items that I pulled, sentences, paragraphs, fragments of, of data, from this article in the Journal of Endocrinology called Beneficial and Adverse Effects looks like. of Testosterone don't think we're making these on up. the Cardiovascular <laughs> System of Men which in and of itself is a mouthful, and it's limited to the study of men. I mean, there are studies in Europe that look at testosterone in women, too, but these all look at testosterone in men. And I think partly the reason for this, and I don't know this, this is my own opinion, has to do with the study that Dr. Morgan Thaler referenced in his articles recently uh, about the the uh, study that was done in elderly veterans, male veterans, who... Uh, had a history of a heart attack. Who were in the hospital. Were in the hospital and who were given testosterone. And then some of them had additional heart attacks and And some of those died. Mm -hmm. And so the... The headline came out, oh, my God, testosterone causes heart attacks and stroke in elderly men. And the lawyers jumped right on that. And (laughs) Dr. Morgan Thaler and, like, 65 other professionals around the world immediately began to say, you need to pull this article. This is not what the data shows. This is wrong. The headline is misleading. The information is wrong. The subgroup that was studied is too limited and restricted. It was from the Journal of the AMA. Journal of the AMA, which almost never pulls anything back. Mm -hmm. But at any rate, this article then may include that data, but it includes all of the research that's been done between on men. Ni- between, ni- what is it, 1970 and 2013, every article that's been done on low testosterone and men and, and heart disease and disease. stroke. Right. And then they took all that and collated it. So that's a lot of research and a lot of patients. Right. right. So this is, this, is, this is good information. Mm-hmm. So go so, right so ahead. The first paragraph that I read in legalese, I mean in medicalese, says low T, low testosterone, has been linked to increased blood pressure, uh, dyslipidemia, atherosclerosis, arrhythmia, thrombosis, and endothelial dysfunction, as well as impaired left ventricular function. Okay. Uh, 
Well, yeah, so that's what? exactly what you said. Yeah. Okay, so translation is low testosterone has been linked to increased blood pressure, high cholesterol, not high triglycerides, high cholesterol. So, so when you say low testosterone, part of what you've always said is as you age, your testosterone production decreases. So as you get older, you're going to have lower testosterone. And we'll talk in a few minutes about the difference between bound testosterone and free testosterone mm -hmm. and total testosterone. Uh, but as you get older, you're going to have less. And so this is saying as you get older and you have less testosterone, then there's a positive correlation between that lesser testosterone mm -hmm. and an increased cardiovascular systemic problems. Right. And high cholesterol. All right. Atherosclerosis is just hardening of the arteries. Arrhythmias, which is you know, an abnormal heart rate, thrombosis, which is blood clots, endothelial dysfunction, which is inflammation, like inflammation throughout your body. In, in the heart, within in, the, in blood the blood vessels. vessels. Okay. As well as heart failure. The ventri left ventricular dis or function means heart failure. Okay. So if you have a low T, all of these things, you are much more at risk of having if you have low T than if you have normal testosterone. So anecdotally then that would suggest that if you restored the T to a, a clinical level, so mm -hmm. whatever that might be, normal or, or not, because there are arguments about dosage mm -hmm. among physicians, uh, that would reduce the risk of heart problems? And that, and men, there are many studies that show that, and they've shown that as well. It, but in my in my research, I found that it depends on what type of testosterone you use. Okay, that, tell, tell me what you mean by that. Meaning, if you use a um, cream, an oral, a oral a gel shot. cream, those are usually they make a lot of estrogen, and it talks about that here. They make a lot of estrogen, so they're not as helpful for heart disease and to prevent heart disease and to prevent stroke. However, shots, and if you took pure testosterone, you have to do it daily. Usually they give not bioidentical testosterone as a shot called depo testosterone. And that is a little better. It makes less estrogen. And then testosterone pellets, which is why I use testosterone pellets, uh, actually has the least amount of estrogen made and suppresses the production of estrogen. So, so the kind of testosterone you use does matter. Estrogen's a female hormone. And men have female hormones, and they have more female hormone. Yeah, and it actually does kind of make them feel like they're... <laughs> <laughs> They're I'm getting, emotional. I'm getting hot and I have some guys come in and go, I've never cried in front of TV movies, and now I'm crying, and it's oh, just yeah. ridiculous. And I feel, you know, and that's a high yeah. estrogen. Seriously, huh. it changes your personality a lot. So in any case. <laughs> it makes you more sensitive. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. As It mellows you as you get older. But it's not good for your heart or your brain So to be mellow like that with estrogen. So basically, choose wisely. Okay, but they're not making any they're not even in making any distinctions here. They're just saying all testosterone that was given to men with low testosterone right. decrease their risk of heart disease and decrease their risk of heart failure and, and high blood pressure and um, high cholesterol. So all of those things get better. Are you going to want to translate all this stuff? Because some of this stuff is... Mm. Well, I, I think... <laughs> this can, is what I, we read and we translate in our head. And we talk to each other about all together. But I think uh, maybe sort of a summary translation mm -hmm. would be beneficial. Next paragraph that I wanted to ask you about. It says, a modest association is suggested between low endogenous T... Meaning somebody who has low testosterone all by himself. I mean, just he makes low testosterone. Okay. And incident cardiovascular disease or cardiovascular mortality, implying unrecognized beneficial testosterone effects, residual confounding, or relationship with health status. <laughs> so, what does that mean exactly? <laughs> it means that they found a, I guess the word for modest is not everybody does this, but mm -hmm. most people right. who take, who have low testosterone will have a higher amount of heart disease and they'll die and they'll have a higher rate of death from, from heart, heart disease, disease because they have low testosterone and that implies that means they haven't really studied it 
in the studies that they looked at, although there's a lot of studies from Europe that mm -hmm. have looked at this, that um, it is it has beneficial effects for the things that cause heart disease, inflammation, and, well, and, and high cholesterol. They're also pointing out in the article again and again the distinctions between correlation and causation. Right. They are identifying correlative data. Mm -hmm. This is down and this is up. Right. And and not causative data. This being down made this go up. Well, and for, for you to have a causative data, you have to have every step of the process figured out. Yeah. Meaning, I have to know how this happened. Well, I can put those pieces together from mm -hmm. the research from Europe and some of the other research that, that I've collected. But uh, I know how it works mm -hmm. and why it works this way. But so I can, all I can tell you is, I could describe those and you'd go to sleep. So all I can say is there is data on the mechanism of how low testosterone increases cholesterol, increases heart disease, and increases death from heart disease. So that's, I mean, I, they have the mechanisms. They did not look into that in this study. They just said it works. Well, you know, I think it's, it's relevant to make this point again. You in your work, I mean, we, we've talked before about how doctors compartmentalize in their training mm -hmm. and, and they over focus on just one element uh, of mm -hmm. the type of medicine they want to practice or the patients they want to see and knowledge that's available and common knowledge in other specialized fields doesn't very often overlap. It doesn't. And, and you have made a study of those overlaps that have to do with hormones and in particular testosterone. I've, I've tried to, but you know, it's kind of hard to find. It is, which is why that. you read the journals of endocrinology right? and for your work in men, even though you're a gynecologist. That's right. That's right. And I, I read psychiatric journals and family practice, and I just found a bunch of well, research yeah, on it. Well, yeah, if I'm going to work with men, I need to learn about psychiatry. <laughs> no, no, I just think one. there's a lot about <laughs> testosterone and hormones and a chronology that affects Depression, anxiety, Depression. panic. Yes, and, absolutely. Uh, and I get there's a lot of crossover in the endocrinology world. There's a lot of other specialties that do come into it, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure it gets back out to those specialties. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of making it my mission to get the information out so that you can talk to your neurologist or your psychiatrist about treating some things with just replacing hormones. Well, I and mean, as you've often said, that in gynecology and obstetrics, there's not a specialized bracket for women between 40 and 70. Yeah, there that, isn't. That's trained to know their issues and their problems Here. as opposed to, you know, women globally. Well, in the, you know, training in the 70s and 80s, take their uterus out, give them Premarin. That was it. <laughs> that was uh, that was basically my training. Yeah. And everything else was about pr pregnancy or about young women and periods and mm -hmm. birth control. And so... It may be infertility, but that, that pretty much was my limit. So I think they've increased it a little bit, but not much. People coming out still don't really know what to do with women between 40 on. So so there is no specialty for us. Yeah. So that's what I've kind of, I, I'm trying to make out of um, Your own specialty. my own specialty. Yeah. All right. So as a specialist, looking at some of these other statements from this article, uh, they say dihydrotestosterone. Slightly decreased, uh, decreased systolic blood pressure in healthy men. So okay. I, I'm curious about dihydrotestosterone, DHT, mm -hmm. and systolic blood versus diastolic okay. blood pressures. What, what are those? Dihydrotestosterone, some people call it DHT, mm -hmm. is, is a byproduct of testosterone. So in general, if you have, if, especially in men, if you have a high testosterone, you're going to have a high DHT. Okay. There's a few men I've treated that just don't make that that Converted. jump. Yeah. And DHT is really important. DHT helps your helps your, here helps your blood pressure, but it also crosses to your blood brain, crosses your blood brain barrier into your brain, and it improves your mood and it improves neurotransmitters. So it also makes your muscles bigger. It helps you make the muscles bigger. So DHT is an important byproduct, not one that you want to have too high or too low. So it's important to keep it in those ranges, and that's what I do with my patients. DHT should be in the proper range so that you can get these benefits. Mm -hmm. So it's not just give, giving testosterone. It's watching the byproducts of testosterone, the things that it's broken down into, so that you can keep your 
I can keep all my male patients healthy. And so one of those benefits they're saying is improved systolic pressure. Right. Systolic is the top number. Mm-hmm. On your blood di- pressure chart. On your blood like pressure. And, and diastolic is, is the uh, lower number. number. Mm-hmm. The diastolic is is just a baseline blood pressure in your blood vessels. An at rest blood at, pressure. At rest, your heart's at rest. Right. When, okay. When it isn't. When it is currently beating, or convulsing. When it's, it when it's not contracting. Right. And it's not pushing blood out of your heart. That's your diastolic blood pressure. And when your heart is contracting, that's your systolic blood pressure. So so it's your pulse. Literally, right. it's your pulse mm-hmm. rate. That pulse of those contractions mm-hmm. is the systolic presence. Right. And an adequate amount of DHT improves decreases, the pulse. Decreases the contr- the um, basically it the way it does it. It relaxes the blood vessels. So it does. So if your blood vessels are really tight, mm-hmm. your blood pressure goes up. If they're relaxed, then your blood pressure stays normal. So what what happens as we get older is testosterone drops or we make a lot of goo in our vessels. They get stiff and they get covered with with plaque and they can't dilate and then our blood pressure goes up. And so then testosterone the heart has to pump harder, harder which means you might have a stroke or a heart attack. Well, yeah. That's a that's the end point but yeah, but but you're building. But there's a lot. That. There's a, yeah, you're building. You know, it's that. like That's... adding adding rocks to your backpack. You know, eventually <laughs> you get so much weight you can't. Do I it. never thought of it that way, but you're right. Yeah, it's better it's... to handle it right away. Yeah. But if you replace your testosterone, then that drops your systolic blood pressure. So that's that's a great benefit to your heart and it's a great benefit to the rest of your body actually. It's great benefit for your for people who don't want to have ED because that you know the systolic blood pressure coming down some not too low but some usually means that blood vessels are dilating and then there we go and and that's a vaso dilation. Uh, dilation in a very intriguing and important part of your anatomy that's right makes you more you sensitive want to be able to make it work makes you more sensitive to um, nitric oxide which is what's the produced primary ingredient in, in viagra viagra and drugs like Viagra, other brand names. Mm-hmm. Um, so tied to that, there's a statement that says, long-term oral supplementation administration of testosterone was reported to improve brachial artery vessel reactivity in men with coronary artery disease. All that means is, if you give right, this is your brachial artery, uh-huh. okay, and coming into your chest. So the brachial artery, they studied that. That doesn't mean it's the only artery. Right. And they found that that in men with uh, heart disease, normally you don't get a lot of dilation. If you give them testosterone back, you get dilation. It, it dilates, meaning giving gives you a lot more oxygen to your brain and, and to your heart. So they study that because that's one of the symptoms that men have learned to recognize and doctors have learned to recognize mm-hmm. when a man's having a heart attack. Well, that's true. Which is different for women. We found mm-hmm. in another podcast and research. I don't that think we that's why they studied it. They could get to it. They could, well, okay. They could get to it and, and it would serendipity that. So that, that vessel looks like the vessel that goes to your brain and the one that's in your chest, they could get to that artery. Okay. So they just specify that's the artery because they don't want to over, um, Claim. claim that that it happens to everyone, but basically they're just looking at this as a window into arteries. Okay, All right. so it just means everywhere testosterone dilated the blood so, vessels. So sidebar, then uh, one of the one of the things about this research all being focused on men is that reference because they found that women manifest heart attack onset mm-hmm. differently. Mm-hmm. Not not we have that different we have different symptoms. Yeah, and we we usually don't feel the elephant on our chest like men say yeah. usually we get we get pain in the jaw and we can get pain in the shoulder and the back it's just a different it's a different presentation and one that people don't recognize in the er so yeah. they're they're much better at it now than they were two years ago okay when we first talked about it thank goodness most tea in circulation is bound to plasma proteins 97 to 99 percent of your testosterone is bound to testosterone which means it's attached to a plasma protein that's circulating through your blood. The rest is free testosterone. What is free testosterone and why does it matter? I explain this all day long. It's I, I kind of love to explain this. Well, your testosterone is bound to a protein to inactivate it. So just visualize testosterone like you've got a, 
um, gumdrop that's got, that's that has a little area that's going to stick to something. So that area is open and it's ready to stick. So instead of that gumdrop like sticking to the the uh, surface, we put something over it so it's not sticky anymore. Okay. okay? Right. So it can't stick. So the plasma protein covers the area on the testosterone that would normally attach to cells and activate it. So everything that is in your body that is bound to a protein, every testosterone that's bound to a protein, is not active. It cannot work. It is ne it's completely inactive. So the total testosterone doesn't really matter as much as the free testosterone. So free of binding means it's active. Mm -hmm. So your testosterone then, when we look at total and free, there's a couple things to remember. Total testosterone, in general, I like to think of a pie chart, is a big circle when we're young, okay? Especially, I mean, a bigger circle in men than women. And it has a percentage, just a percentage or a big slice of pie that is free testosterone or active. As we get older, the circle gets smaller, okay, for men. For women, it just disappears. But as we get older, it gets smaller. And that piece of pie, instead of being wide, a big portion percentage of it, it gets really narrow. Well, I can fix the total, okay? But I can't make that percentage get bigger. Mm -hmm. So at, as, as we get older, even if we replace the testosterone, you have to go to somebody who knows how to give you enough testosterone so that slice of pie is actually the same amount of free testosterone as you had when you were younger. And that's one of the hot button issues right. in the topic of replacing hormones, particularly replacing testosterone. Testosterone, right. Is what's the appropriate dosage? Do you restore to normal, whatever normal is mm -hmm. for men of a given age, or do you restore to the point of functionality? Well, most of the time, if you restore to normal young testosterone levels mm -hmm. you, and you're older, you're not going to have enough free to feel good. So I have to go over, beyond what I have to normal. go beyond right. and then I will get enough of the active form mm -hmm. for somebody to feel well. And so a lot of doctors don't know what you know because they haven't done the specialized work. Mm -hmm. And if I wander into my regular physician's office and he tests my testosterone, he'll be shocked and say, oh my God, this is a problem because it'll make you have a heart attack. Because, no. no, he won't know no, that. No, he won't know that. He won't, he hasn't read this. Okay. Endocrinologists read this, they're not cardiologists. So why would he be concerned other than the fact that it's high on the Oh, well, because test. we've already shown that it doesn't cause heart attacks. Right. We already shown it protects from heart attacks. Right, we know he that. Yeah, we know that. He He's gonna worry about prostate. Ah. But your prostate's not seeing the total testosterone either. It's invisible. All it's seeing is the free testosterone. Right. So we have a couple problems here. Education or thought process through the physiology of this hormone. For the doctors. For the doctors. And we have another problem. On the lab tests, um, they don't have an even a normal total that is functional. 400 is the magic number. 400 to 1200 is a normal amount of total testosterone and free testosterone should be 129 or above. Hmm. So if you don't have a free testosterone of 129, you're not going to feel right. And most most lab tests say 30 to 100 or something like that, something right. that is not functional. They're giving you the average for your age or some, or age adjusted. They're not giving you what's normal and healthy for you. Or feeling good. So we have several problems here. We have a lab problem. We have a, an education for doctors problem. And um, I'm not sure that that's going to get fixed too soon. And we have people looking at the wrong number. They're not looking at the the free testosterone is really, if I could have one test, that would be the only test I'd do. Right. Because if it's if it you have enough free testosterone, then I don't need to treat you. You're protected from all of these things. You're healthy. And you should be functional. If you're not functional and you have a great free testosterone, then I look for other things. Diabetes or or problems with um, vas the vasculature. You know, you've so, already you've already had problems with your vessels. So to wrap this up, we've been talking about a complex article in a, a specialized medical journal. <laughs> It gives lots of terminology and data that doctors know, but ordinary people don't or should know. know. Should know. Uh, and basically, the the end of the, the article summary is that testosterone doesn't cause heart attacks. It may actually prevent them. Right. 
if you have the right amount. And, and so stroke. The, the question is how, how to get the right amount. Mm -hmm. And as Kathy was just explaining, doctors don't have that education and information. Lab tests don't have that education and information. She does because she's really worked hard to acquire it. She's done what Albert Schweitzer said many years ago. It's better to light a single candle than to curse the darkness. And she's <laughs> gone about lighting all these candles and saving lives and improving the quality of life. Mm -hmm. So if you have concern about these issues, find a physician like Kathy who specializes in acquiring this information and the ability to provide this procedure or come to Kathy. Yeah, I'd be glad to see you. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.